I've always, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm just checking. And you know what? So here's the thing is, I think we just went live just now. Again, it's the YouTube thing, so it's okay. So take two. You're on. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, step right here. How's that? That's good. A little bit. Okay. So uh, my name's Ty, transport guy, right? Yeah. What do we do? We connect dealers, auctions, carriers. So I've done this for about 20 years today, and I've met some really cool guys that are part of what Jay always talks about, the ecosystem, how big the ecosystem is, right? Huge. So it's cool because, whoa, mm. watch out for wasp. Yeah, you dude. Just, I know. I Why? Like a murder <laughs> hornet. <laughs> it's terrible. So before we get too far, I want to talk about, this is really cool. Your show Tuesday night with Dan... Auto sled, yeah. Dan, Dave. David, Atul, and Peter, yeah. Okay, I've been thinking about it. Matter of fact, I went and watched it again. That's how amazing that show was. Wow. Because these guys are really doing what I always talk about. They're following the car. Remember how I always follow the car. The car will tell you everything you want to know. Follow it. Watch. From the time it's produced, it goes somewhere. So today, uh, what we're going to try to do is we're going to connect one more dot for everybody. Right? Following the car. So I'm in Canada, there's a rail not too far from me, where I'm standing right now, just like that way. Railroad, yep. Kansas City, Railroad, and yes, we have a lot of rail here. Yeah, a lot of rail. Yeah. So uh, I'm standing here, and I'm following the car. So I see these union guys driving by every day with F-150s. Where are they going? They're going to the rail yard. What are they doing? They're unloading the F-150s. Where are they going? They're going to go on a train, right? Where are they going to go on the train? Farther away than here, right? So That's right. As we go, right? Do the, yeah, I like that, man. Where do they go? Where do they go? Yeah. Right? And how do they go there? You know, I, I've never. this is why I'm so excited about today's show. I get to talk to some guys that actually are in charge of the cars that go on the, tra the That's train. That's awesome. Yeah. These guys, uh, Road and Rail Services... Let's go talk to him real quick. You want yeah, to? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's find out. I like it, man. This is a good one. Yeah, it's really cool because I didn't even know this existed. Okay, look. Here's the uh, road and rail. See that? Road and rail services. We see it. Awesome. Okay, and then in here we've got, uh, there's Chris. Hey, what's up, Chris? This is doing? Jay. Hey, Jay. And this is Brian. How's it going? Hey, Brian. Brian. And Jay. Okay, so what these guys have is the coolest job ever. And I mean, so explain to us, Chris, exactly what it is you do. So uh, we uh, multi-level pre-trip the auto racks for the, the rail yard. We go through, inspect, and clean out and prep uh, the rough cars for them to load on the vehicles to ship them out to their destination. Now, bear with me, Ty. Oh, really? Internet connection. All my, you know. Anyways, you're good. Keep going. Okay, rail car. Rail car. So you guys Tell me again what you do one more time. Um, it's called multi level pre tripping, and it's uh, auto racks that they ship out the vehicles to their destination from the from the manufacturer. So we go through and inspect and clean them and uh, make sure they're they're good to go to, to ship out with. So you go inside the rail car, yep. and you make sure that the hydraulics work? Well, it's all the equipment to tie down the vehicles with and all the safety features. So, what are you using? Straps? Uh, they have, they have different, they have different style of chocks, chocks? Uh, you know, what you call chocks. They, to hold the they, tires in place. They lock down onto the grate okay. and, uh, they'll, they'll have like four of them on all the way around the car. Right. So two and, per and, tire. Yeah. And it locks to the thing. And, now, and are they you double stacking them? Yeah. And they're, uh, the ones we use are bi-levels. So they have, it's two, two levels to the rail car, uh, on the smaller vehicles, they go on tri levels, which got three levels up. So. Right. Smaller, smaller sedans. Yeah. So, what? How many small cars can you put on one? What do you call it? A cart? Trail? Uh, train? Auto rack. Auto rack. Yeah, about fourteen cars. On one. <laughs> on one rail car. Fourteen cars on one rail car. Hello. Well, if it's a truck or something, they can get about ten. On right. Now, is there is there a similarity between um, the chocks 
on a on a rail car and the uh, the inside of a shipping container that carries cars. Is there any relation there? I'm not sure. I don't know much about the shipping containers. Right. Isn't it funny how yeah we like right yeah carriers rail and then uh, shipping container. We're all moving cars, but it's yeah it's different mechanics. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so what I did before the show is I tried to go inside where the cars are. Right? Wow. So you imagine a big parking lot with a lot of cars, trucks, yeah. and there's the river, right? So I thought, well, I'll go in and try to find Chris. Guess what? You can't just pull in this parking lot. Secure. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's all secure. Yeah. I mean, because it's all uh, uh, Homeland Security, so you have to have, you know, you're supposed to have a badge and everything that says you pass the background that, so... Yeah, they keep it plugged down pretty good. Yeah, I thought so I was. Uh, well, I won't say what they thought. Well, it's kind of like a port, right? Similar, yeah, pretty much. right? It's yeah. like a port. Port. So, so we go to these conferences and we learn about you guys, okay. real guys. We call them rail and we call mm -hmm. them row row. Row rows both, right? Okay. Like port stuff. Yeah. So, in these big conferences where the OEMs, the Ford, the Toyota, the all these guys show up, you guys are always a part of the conversation. Whether you know it or not, it's amazing. Yeah, it's because we the, the logistics to get cars from the manufacturer to the dealer is a huge process yeah. that nobody knows. Yeah, it really. Is. We I just didn't. think our car shows up in our driveway, right? I, I didn't. I had no idea until I started working the road what all goes on because it'll go from like the, what we deal with are the Ford trucks, so they get shipped from from the plant on a truck to the parking lot here, and then it goes on to a rail car there, and then it gets may ship to another destination, but on another truck, and then gone somewhere else. Right. Hey, do, do, can you describe primarily the running lane that your rail yard is a part of? Uh, I'm not. I, all the trucks here I know are shipped to Canada. Okay, that's that's, I'm, that's what I'm asking. Cool. Shipped to Canada. Uh huh. Wow. See, I didn't know that. I didn't that's know that either. That is that's really interesting. You just had a call. Uh, I just had a call. Somebody called in from your show this week trying to find out how he's a carrier, mm -hmm. car hauler, and he wants to bring cars from the United States to Canada on a truck. Okay. Who do you talk to about that? What is that? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, international, international uh, car hauling is an interesting niche. Because there are some guys that, what's that, there's that city up on the northern tip of Washington State. Is it Bellingham or, I'm going to get that wrong, but there, it's it just, it's a constant, it's almost like a mini port almost. Port of yeah. entry. Yeah. Cool. This is what these, what I think these guys do is they make sure that when we put cars on there, that everything works. Yeah. Yeah, I have to make sure like all the doors are functioning properly and. You know, like say it has all the equipment to, to tie down the cars with and there's like plastic guards on the inside so it doesn't bump your vehicles and all that stuff so we have to make sure all that's there you know, there's right. no free no car once, once you pull a vehicle in you only have about a foot that you can open a door uh -huh. so that kind of squeeze in and out of the doors right so that way that way you got your your door your door guides your door protectors that way they're not bumping and scratching and dinging on the side of the rail car. Which actually, a foot, 12 inches, yeah. is more than a car hauler guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like, we're usually anywhere between four to six inches. Yeah. So if you got yeah. 12, yeah. that's awesome. I mean, where you just <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Do you I'm not, I'm not getting that. I'm not getting that. <laughs> that's so, uh, guys, I know you're eating your lunch. I appreciate you yeah. taking oh, the time. That was awesome. See that? Yeah, <laughs> right on. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys. guys, thank you so much. Road and Rail. There wow, it is. those guys are cool. You're in Kansas City. You're at Road and Rail Services. And I did pull up. Uh, here, I'm just going to oh. pull up. the. While you, ste while you step outside and... Uh, and, and fight off the murder hornets. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pull up the website here. I, I pulled up so Road and Rail Services. Go to roadandrail.com um, and find out more about Road and Rail Services. And you know it's interesting. You were talking about wow, look at all that 
track services rail car i'd like to know more about what kind of inspections they do i'd love to do a follow-up sometime um and i know you know we caught them at lunch and i know that's that's tough but I, it's so cool to have their time um but it made re, you really did you made me think of when we were at uh automotive logistics in i think it was detroit I think it was, yeah. Detroit. and there was a lot of rail. There was there were exhibitors, and there were several rail companies. There were several. That's where we met the guy talking about uh, specialized air charter. So they had the air charter for the tier one and the tier two, and then the rail. And um, yep, there was vessel shipping there as well. And it was really it was fascinating because you're like, wow, this. This ecosystem just keeps getting bigger. It's like the universe just keeps expanding. Well, it does. And, and so one of the reasons, I was, like I was trying to tell you earlier, so excited about talking to these guys is, you know, <clears throat> your Tuesday night show with Auto Sled. And again, I, just, I mean, you know, listening to those guys talk, whether you like technology, you don't like technology. I'm not a technology guy, but that where they, I, I think they're just, killing it is they're following the car and i was thinking on the way here i thought okay let's let's really break this down anytime <clears throat> there's to me two two obvious markets private view right right they start breaking it down this is why i like these guys because they're car guys they get it you know like i was listening to dave i know uh, moving 250 cars he's got two inventory managers pulling his hair out why i know that guy never met david but i know david right <laughs> yeah exactly so, i was thinking about it, i thought okay new cars are you know who knows when they're going to rebound i don't know i'm not even going to try to get but i don't know really break down the used car market it is so big right oh my gosh break it down take a little more time and really think about it digest it think about it. not a private okay I'm not selling my car on Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. I'm, I'm that guy. Okay, that, who cares? I'm the guy that's moving my kid from college. Okay, all right. Look at the dealer, though. Look at the dealer. I want a car. Where do I go? I go to the dealer. Dealer, I want a car. Well, not that one. I want a different one. So he's got to go find me the car. So somebody's got to bring it to him. All right. Then now we're talking about bringing it to my house. All these crazy things, but the dealer is focus remember we do love your dealer in february yeah love you right <clears throat> so what i'm saying is is i'm saying these guys are on the money they've got the right people they've got the right connection and they're following the car and the car usually goes through the hands of a dealer you know it's my well here, and it's cool i get to watch because you've been just as I've, I've, I've kind of opened your eyes up to load boards and technology more than you had before. And you've opened my eyes up to dealers more than I had before. And uh, I got to watch with Auto Sled. I mean, they are... Oh, what's going on with my lighting? They are speaking your language. Like, I mean, I saw that right off. And I was like, that is amazing in that... They are dealers solving a problem for dealers, and there is something exciting about it. Well, and that's, I'm glad you said that because here's what I thought. I thought I've been doing this 20 years, and I've got some of the most incredible friends, and they're car dealers. And some of my incredible friends own more than one rooftop, right? And as I thought about, like, man, where was David and Dan when I was a kid? These, okay, so my car dealer friends are awesome, and I love them. But nobody wanted to take the time to try to help solve the problem. And if you go back and you listen to these guys, they were frustrated to the point, okay, and I thought about this, care suck. We all know this. We suck. As a care. <laughs> oh. Woo! Right? Boy, did you open up a can. Well, I love carriers. Did you? <laughs> I know. I do, too. I'm just telling you, there is... As carriers, we we don't do things right. Okay? There we go. That's a better way to put it. Don't always do things don't the right. Don't always. <clears throat> I'll bubble. I can yeah. understand. <laughs> There's <a> dealer. <laughs> All right. There's enough to go around, though. You know, it's so cool. Is that? Uh, and I was I was I was telling you about the IARA, and I know you got to tune in a little bit yesterday. 
Amazing. But man, those auction guys are are speaking the same language. They're like, "What is going on with carriers? Where's my car?" And I know there's a lot of frustration from carriers too. Right. You know, and you, and you start looking at the ecosystem or what I prefer to. I just I'm a dealer and auction guy. So if it's dealer to dealer, great. If it's auction to dealer, great. Or dealer to auction, great. That's where I live. That's my favorite place to hang out. Well, things are changing, Ty. You need to pay attention. They are changing. So I'm changing as well. I'm saying, yeah, let's use your technology. Let's use your load board. But here, I'm going to still teach you relationships are invaluable and you cannot replace them with technology. You can use technology to build a relationship. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if you own your own business and you want to call yourself a carrier, you're going to have to have a relationship. And do you know, do you know what's funny? Okay, so... If uh, people that use technology to connect shippers and carriers, guess what they want to make sure that that technology helps them do? Find the right people, a.k.a. relationship. You still need a relationship even though you're using technology. Exactly. <laughs> so this is why I really was so excited about auto sled. And I keep, I, I mean, I hate to keep talking about auto sled. Not oh, really. No, it's kind of cool. And I was I'm thinking, right. okay, can you imagine... 15 years ago, when I'm really, when I'm starting to get it figured out, I'm adding trucks, I'm adding, getting into a big accounts, I'm rolling, man, I'm on fire, right? It's happening. Yeah, yeah. Real. My dollar per mile is through the roof. How is that? I built a lane, right? I was able to deal with the problem because everybody knows as a carrier, it is nonstop problem. And that's where Jay and I are transparent. You can make money as a carrier. Yeah. You can make money as a carrier using a load board. I think it's possible. Yeah, actually, it, it is possible. Right. So And people do it. People do it. Do you want to build a business? Do you want to own a business? Right. That's where we say, okay, now if you do, here's some interesting things. And one of the beautiful things I really appreciated about what Autosled was talking about was they didn't say, here, nationwide. They didn't say, here, we've got, look at all the round seed money we just got at the big meeting, you know. They didn't talk about all the crazy, crazy stuff. They started small. They were listening to key people and they were developing, right? They were using their knowledge. And I'm like, man, if I could have known these guys 15 years ago, oh, wow. I know. Interesting. <laughs> well, and that's what's interesting, too, is that, you, you know, Peter has to be thinking that because Peter, with his long history, right? I mean, his company was sold to Ready, so he knows it, it, it must, he must think, well, we're here now, so we're going to do the best we can, and we're going to move this thing along. Yeah, and it, it, so, again, it goes back to, <clears throat> I'm excited, here's why I'm excited. If you're a carrier, you want to get in the business, right? Just basic 101 things. And I, what I see, what I really see, Jay, is that your effort in your show, right, 150-some shows, Coming yeah. up on years, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Tuesday night is one fifty-two. Yeah. In a row. Where do you, where where do you go to find out about auto so Where do you go to find out about rail and road, road and rail? Right. It's the Auto Transport Intel show. And my point is that as as we continue to to do this, I'm telling telling you there's a certain degree of integrity, morals, and business ethics that you really need in the transport business. And that is a shared belief. Everybody believes it. And I think what we're wondering is, will technology help us achieve that next level? I think it could. I think it could. Maybe. It's, it's hard for me to really fully uh, to believe that. I know, I know. Well, and, and yet, I heard several guys at auctions, independent auctions... We're like, yeah, we're running cars and we're shaking hands with dealers. So the, we're still in the middle of, of figuring out the recipe of how we really get there. Well, I, I hate to be a, a jerk, and I'm <laughs> a jerk, but I will tell you, I, I still say the independent auction is, is sitting on a gold mine right now. <clears throat> and I, I, I just... Well, I, I, I think I can, they're... They're going to agree with you. 
I think that right now is a great time if I were an independent auto auction to capitalize huge, huge. Yeah, no, I, and I think you're right, and I think there is this clamoring to figure out, uh, you know, which way, which way are you going to go? What are you going to do? Um, well, the, for me, is you got you got you know these big heavy hitters with a lot of money and a lot of data. We don't have to say names, right? I don't have to say names, but there's no. some big out there with some big money that are controlling or like i like to say when you and i are talking i like to say they're setting the standard and well and there's some major executives <laughs> making major decisions to protect the business interests and while that's happening it allows the smaller guys to move faster into positions that you know the bigger guys can't really stop them and well, honestly, example, I, I'll tell you something really interesting. That even applies to this channel. Oh, yeah. The ability for my momentum to continue to move faster, I think people are seeing it. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay, Look at what well, we've done in the past six months. Oh, unreal. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, you know, again, like, okay, I won't, I don't have to name a name. We'll just say a big one, a big auction, right? Not an independent. Yeah, I check not an independent. Every week, hey, how's it going? Oh gosh, we had six hundred cars. What? What? <laughs> six hundred cars. Six hundred cars sold in the auction that day. We had a seventy-five percent sale, which, by the way, is actually down. Remember, it's always been eighty-five to eighty the last what four weeks, three which weeks. It's interesting. Yeah, and it went down. So, and you know what's you know what this coincides with is that okay so if the sale numbers went down and we're also seeing less capacity on central there must be other numbers changing where's the convergence of that data and by the way i want to tell you this what you know what's really cool tuesday night before before kurt of jack cooper logistics talks he's on at 9 30 you're going to be on this show at 8 45 we've got a news reporter from automotive news talking about dealer inventory yeah that's tuesday night well you know that i can't wait to talk about that because i can definitely talk about that for a long time <clears throat> but we're back to auctions and back to carriers right kind of what we we talk about a lot if if you've got a big name auction in a big name city running 600 cars on a big day sale there's a problem right say well, that again say people just like people just set down their pencil what if you've got a big name auction, right? We'll call it franchise, whatever. But you know who I'm talking about. So you got a big name auction running 600 cars on a big sale day. There's a problem, right? Unless you've reduced your expenses on that one sale day to basically zero, and you're still charging the same buy fee and sell fee. I think you just had a great day, right? But what I'm saying is, is okay, you and you know, this was yesterday in the I I A R A, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're at virtual seminar, which was awesome. Which was, it was an auction uh, virtual event. Yeah, sitting there just learning stuff, and these guys are talking about what the price of a used car that you buy online on a screen from your desk, 400 miles away, is through the roof. I'm paying retail. I'm paying retail for a used car at an auction that I can't even go look at. And hopefully the right. report is good, right? I mean, that's what we're hoping. Right, and hoping, yeah, that's right. And they t they talked about CRs a lot. That was good stuff. Yeah, yeah. and they and, and yeah. Arbitration working out for you, Mister Dealer. Right. Oh, does anybody want to talk about that? Okay, so where I'm going with this is is okay. Let's complicate it. Let's don't let anybody come. Now let's make arbitration transportation maybe a little more difficult. I don't know. Well, that's what one of the one of the guys was talking about. Listen, when you add all the COVID regulations, see, safe distancing and masks gets really boring within about thirty seconds. But when he put in the context of how much more added time, even the driveway van, you can only fill it half to a third what you could before. It takes them two to three times longer to do what they did before, and you got to move hundreds of cars. You. You've got a totally new set of problems. Yeah. Yeah, you do. That's and a pretty interesting thing. 
reality of it is here. Here's the reality, okay? And and I'm not. I'm just Ty. I'm just some dude that does stupid stuff on Friday, right? <laughs> That's Ty. Right. I'm just telling you, somebody is is going to have to say enough, and I'm going to go with the independent dealer auction. Sorry, the independent auction is going to be the first one that says, "Come on in. The doors are open. Bring all your cars. Let's have a good time." You know, I'm I'm messaging yesterday on LinkedIn this lady from Cox. I'm like, yeah. hey, when, I I was, you know, I don't know if you're on LinkedIn, but you get, hey, by the way, oh. happy birthday today! Oh, thank you guys so much. Woo. Appreciate it. I'm 25. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, it's, Sue likes to say that. She's like, yeah, I just do you know Sue's birthday was Tuesday? She just turned 25. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Happy yeah. birthday. Yeah, I know, right? Cool. So where I was going was is that if you're if you're looking at the price of the cards, the technology's changed and everybody still wants their stuff fast. And you know, there's a lot of details in here. I'm thinking, okay, how does this work for the guy that bought nine cars? I'm sorry, he bought ten cars, but you can only haul nine. What what happens to that other one? But and you know what? The real problem is he didn't buy ten. Think it prices for the prices through the roof, capacities down. He only got to buy a couple. He's he's having a hard time moving two. That's his problem. Right, and so that's where I I just like I said I, I don't know the answer. All right. There's a lot I'm of not, factors. My job is to help people that want to be a transport guy, car hauler, carrier, whatever you call it on their own business, I feel like my job is to make you aware as possible, as much aware as possible, that it's not easy. And being transparent, having ethics, having values is important. And that was kind of, nobody really came out and just said it on Tuesday night's show, but I think that's what dealers really are looking for, right? So we all, so as a carrier, we're like, yeah, well, how many times have they lied to us? It doesn't matter. This is your... (laughs) Right, it really it really doesn't matter if the car's sold or not sold. When they tell you, that, "Hey, man, I need that car it's sold." The customer sitting here waiting. Hurry up! Hurry up! Well, who well, cares? It'd be nice to get in the transport business, right? It's your job. And, well, and and rather than when they, when they say, "Hey, so where in the lot do you do I park to unload?" and they say, "Just do it in the middle of the street." If they could just say, "I'm sorry, you got to do it in the middle of the street." I don't know. Shot yeah. in the dark. Because you know what? Unloading cars in the middle of the street on a highway off-ramp in Houston where people are going 60 miles an hour. One of them might mistake in your car hauler for an upper deck of a parking lot. You know? Yeah, plenty of times. It's That's why I'm trying to tell you. Here's here's what you need to know before you decide you want to be a car hauler. It's dangerous. It's going to be up all the weather and all the elements you're going to be dealing with people that maybe aren't as friendly as you because they've got other pressures that you know nothing about right i just want my you got a beep button bleep out the bad words yeah here's my bleep button is the live chat hey thank you guys thank you so much for those birthday wishes <laughs> um you know well I, you know, I, I just when you were talking I, I got ahead a vision of an analogy here's what's happening you tell ty that you that you're going to be an astronaut and you're going to get you you're going to be a car hauler, and so what we do is we bring you into the uh, command center at Auto Transport Intel and we try to show you all the dangerous stuff in the universe. You can hit a planet. There's space dust. There's black holes. But now that you know about this stuff, you ready to, you ready to take your first space flight? Right. Well, and Here so here's can. what. Here's what I kind of see that's happening because of you and because of us, our relationship. And this, this is cool. And this is where I get excited about auto sled. I get excited about uh, other guys, Mark. I think oh, about Mark. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Our ecosystem, our core, yes. So I started thinking about what, what we have, like you said, as a core is the ecosystem. I started thinking about things like, do you know we've got a guy in Florida We've got a guy in Alabama, a guy in Mississippi, a guy in Texas, a guy in Arizona, a guy in Ohio, a guy in New York, a guy in Pennsylvania, 
and we're continuing to build this network of people that are, you know, call it a cult. I call them my gang members, right? <laughs> so, you know, and they stay in touch on a regular way. Hey, Ty, yeah. you build my business. They do. do. It. It's cool. Yeah. Ty, 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 you know, and I'm all for it. You know why? Because someday there's going to come somebody like Auto Sled who's going to need this network of guys that get it, right? So let's think about it. I'm a short mile guy. Short mile, long dollar, right? Yeah. Especially now, especially if you've got a little three car hog. Let's try to make short mile, long, dollar, right? You hear me say that all the time. Let's build a short lane so that we can dominate, right? Okay, well, how many dealers know that? None. None. Okay, well, what do I do, Ty, about the guy? I don't want to, I don't like short lanes. And I don't like people. I just want to drive my truck. Okay, well, guess where you're going to go? You're going to go into this category, which is completely digital. You're going to go into the completely digital world where we're going to hook you up with auto stuff. We're going to hook you up with ACV. We're going to hook you up with backlot cars. We're going to hook you up with central dispatch. We're going to hook you up with blah, blah, blah. And you're going to be the guy, good luck, by the way, but you're going to be the guy that runs all over God's country. And, and we want you to be a part of this because we need you. Now, we may not think that's the smartest move but we need you because apparently people buy cars all across the united states and you know what surprises me and i mean I, I i suppose it's 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 simple in its reason but what surprises me is how much companies don't know about other companies in auto transport i'm watching this i, I want i'm in the i'm in the virtual event yesterday and i messaged a couple guys and and because one guy was complaining about um, software, and I said, "Well, how many softwares have, do you know about, or have you tried?" He named two, and I said, "There are over a dozen. You, you don't even know that. You don't even know that, no, and that's okay. And I'm not mad at you, but that's no, how bad the awareness has been." But this is this illustrates how the value of what you're doing. The value of what we are doing, the value of what you started, okay? And, and it's the car shipping business channel, right? And David, remember David with Auto Sled? Remember Peter with Auto Sled? And Dan, and, okay, remember those guys with Auto Sled? You know what they're talking about? They're talking about carriers. They're talking about cars, right? So because of what you're doing, and, and this is where I see it is really important, very valuable, is bringing dealers, right? Bring in auctions and bringing carriers. Here we go. Hey, Mr. Dealer, here's the deal. I don't need to sell you anything. I just want to serve you, right? And here's how I serve you best. I, I go from here to here. This is, my, this is where I go, okay? Hey, that's great. I got this auto sled. I got this whatever. Uh, here, use this, and now we're buddies, okay? And it works. Cool. And, and what's cool is, this is what excites me, and then we're going we're gonna to wrap this up here, but... Uh, if everything was business as usual, it's that's the hardest time to penetrate a market. But nothing is business as usual right now. And so this is the best time to make a difference. And that's what gets me excited. Yeah, I agree. So anyway, thank you, uh, Road and Rail. Rail and yeah, Road. thank you. Chris, Brian, that was amazing. Thank you, Jay. Road and Rail uh, Services. Go to roadandrail.com. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I, I, I really look forward to learning more. And thank Ty, thank you for doing this. Being uh, the man really, on the street, good job. That's a hard job. I want to meet them. Yeah, I was. I was a little scared. I got kicked out uh, just like last Friday. I got kicked <laughs> well, I tell you what. You know what? Here And here's some more good news. If this helps you. I get kicked uh, out a lot. <laughs> we, got, we got a couple. We, we got some good feedback. From that getting kicked out of, of last week, we actually got some good feedback, and um, there's going to be some positive stuff out of that. So, yeah. man, keep doing what you're doing. This is this is working. This is really cool. Uh, it is, and it's you know, it, I, I I understand to a degree, but it, like today, I actually was offended to be real honest with you because I thought, oh, yeah, this, it's hard. This, no, this is clearly why we have a problem. I know. That's exactly. I identified myself, right? Very, and look, man, I mean, do I look like I'm out to hurt anybody? Right, today? exactly. <laughs> of you, take all your cars. Do so I have a gun? dangerous. Do I look that awful mean, you know, really? Uh, 
but anyway, I mean, I was as I, I thought, okay, I'm not going to get offended. I'm not going to be a jerk. I had two opportunities to be a real smart ass. Excuse my language. Probably, but I did. yeah. And I just thought, okay, I get it. These people are so weird, right? So I was thinking, <laughs> what, what we do because it is such a train wreck. It what? Train wreck. Hey, listen, and even in the, for the past few years, I've been talking about. I made a YouTube channel in auto transport, and people are like, "What? Why?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Want your car? <laughs> Hello." <laughs> it's called media marketing and discussion. I mean, you got about a hundred automotive. My God, you could throw a rock at an automotive webinar. Yeah. Throw a rock and hit an auto. I mean, but an auto transport, find find any verticals talking to each other. It's unheard of. Yeah, it's, it's weird. So, so it is. anyway, I'm saying go back to your dealer. Love your dealer. Go meet a dealer. Go be appreciative of the dealer. Dealers are good. Dealers are where I think you're going to find a lot of cars to move. If you need help, you call me, tie the transport guy, CTS, whatever. Call me, I'll help you. I'm, I'm all about helping you. Man. And that's, you know, I think we got a deal. Call me for 15 minutes, I'll talk to you for 30 without even thinking about money. Well, yeah, what I, I, call it the fir- I call it the first talk. Call Ty, get a first talk. Your phone number's in the live chat. There's a sign-up link to the monthly roundtable. I also, check this out. I got a, uh, um, I, don't, I think it was a YouTube question earlier and um sent him over to cts business coaching and he's already signed up wow isn't that cool it really is cool and you know the guys that we have in our group i i I would love someday for them all just to give a testimony because it it really is it's probably end up doing it it's just amazing man we goosebumps because it goes back to relationships and here we are. We're using media. We're using technology. Been a fan of it, but we're building these incredible relationships that are just wow. So, wouldn't it be cool someday if we could say, "Hey, yeah, call." That's yeah, I, I know. Call, right, call so and so. Yeah. Well, we're already. I. I, there, I didn't predict where we'd be right now, so I can't see around the corner of the future. <laughs> But I, I'm sure excited about it. We seem to be on the right path. Well, one last thought I would leave. Um, the the relationship, you know Ron, right? Ron traffic. Oh, yeah, Ron at Traffic, he's awesome. Right, so he's in New York. Uh, we've been talking to a guy, Dennis, for about a year up in, uh, I want to think, say Maryland. I could be wrong, but okay. anyway... <clears throat> Dennis is really wanting to start a car hauling business. He wants a stinger, right? He wants a whole nine at a time. We've been talking to him for a year, time. Here's what you do. Here's the plan. Lay it out, right? So with COVID, with the economy, elections coming up, any normal person might be a little concerned. So I said, hey, you know, here's what I would do. I'd call Ron. Oh, good idea. Right. Call Ron. Call Ron. He's in your neighborhood. He knows He knows that region. He knows mm-hmm. that area. Mm-hmm. Right up. So call Ron and see what he's got to say about local business. Didn't hear back from for like, I don't know, a week or two. <clears throat> Dennis gets back and said, Hey, I talked to Ron. I'm in. I'm going. <laughs> that's awesome. And how cool is that too? Cause that, yeah, that's another Testament. And that's actually part of the reason we got so fragmented is everybody's so scared of anybody else taking their business and their money now that is understandable i get it that is a normal reaction but uh our margins and our business shouldn't be so paper thin that we feel that way and i well, think it's an indicator of a, of a market problem true but there's also the element of greed as a carrier i can i can be honest and i can tell you you get greedy right yeah so what happens a lot of times is, yeah, I'll take 180 cars. I'll get them. No matter, I'll get them. I'll move them. Well, I just got another 180. Well, you told everybody that they would be there tomorrow, Ty. How are you going to pull that off? Problem, right? <laughs> right. Uh, so I start making phone calls. Hey, going to be a little late, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever I come up with. But you want <laughs> to still do it yourself. You want to do it myself. And it, it's only because I've done it for so long. I got some good news, everybody. Next week, you're going to have another 180 cars to move. 
I don't know how it works. I can't explain it, but that's the way it happens. It, every week, every month, every year, car dealers do the same thing. They wake up in the morning and they want to sell a car. One more car than they sold yesterday, last week, and last month. And I can assure you, if you can somehow resist the urge to be greedy and actually be inclusive, right? Hey, I got three cars. I'm not going to get them moved. I want them. They're mine, but I don't want anybody else to touch them. Well, if you're doing your business right and you've got a relationship with your dealer, you can give them to anybody and never worry about that guy taking your cars. You're helping that guy. You're still making a little money. And guess who's really happy? The customer, the dealer. Well, right? and what you just said is what brokers, larger brokers, that's how they focus their time, right? They're focused on pleasing the customer, which is... When you go back to what the dealers and the auctions say, that's what they're focused on too. If we're not happy, we're going somewhere else. Well, we need it now. We need our cars right now. I'd be careful with this. I agree with what well, you're saying. I know. I know. This is it's funny because <laughs> some of what you said, what we're do, we were walking on eggshells, but we're doing it. We're not just not talking about it, which is what's been going on forever. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, and you you bring out you get a dealer without the camera, without the video, without nothing. Oh. You start asking about certain things, referring to auctions. F this and, and F that. There'll be a lot of f bombs. You'll hear some stuff that maybe you didn't want to hear. <laughs> oh yeah, you will. You will. And that's what's so interesting is we're. I'm trying to bring a conversation live on camera that I know, I know it's gonna be. I know it's gonna be watered down, but mm. it's still new information because we need to have this conversation yeah it's good anyway i know we got uh thank you again yeah if anybody need call i'll be around contact ty ty buddy thank you so much we got a couple meetings this afternoon so i'll be i'll be talking to you soon thanks for what you do thank you jay have a great day weekend right. you too buddy okay bye all right so that is oh let's go check in the live chat so we're on the live chat guys i want to thank you so much for tuning in today uh please do remember to leave a like share subscribe tell your friends um and we went a little long actually we went longer than i planned on it so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna finish this up but i do want to thank you for tuning in um i'm really excited about um yep we got a couple meetings today leading into next week so tuesday night um, and I haven't really done much promotion of this because I just wanted to make sure everything was set to go. But Tuesday night, I've got Larry Veliquette from Automotive News. Um, he's going to be on at 845 on Tuesday Night's Live talking about dealer inventory. Awesome. Um, he was on the Daily Drive podcast on Automotive News. And he did an article about it. And he knows a lot about dealer inventory and so that's going to be really great. We're going to have him on at 8.45. And then at 9.30, we're going to have Kurt DeRoy, Chief Commercial Officer at Jack Cooper Logistics. He's going to be live on Auto Transport Intel. Jack is back. And that's what we're going to be talking about. So um, he doesn't have a whole lot of time, but he's going to give us some time. It's so cool. That's Tuesday night on Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. Of course, you got Thursday dispatching live friday cars on the move guys really excited thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope you have a good weekend stay safe um oh let's see oh here we go johnny has the insurance guy you had on last month what was his contact it's funny i just recommended his info earlier to somebody else and it is i want to say uh, i want to say car looking this up right now for you johnny i think it's car uh his name is lionel yates bear with me let me find you the link because i want to get you the right link but lionel yates at cy financial he's got a web page that he set up just for car haulers lionel yeah and you can check out that show too again that was on, uh, there was a show called, like, Your D.O.T. Guy. Um, and, um, man, I wish I had that link right in front of me. But I'm going to find it here. Bear with me. 
So when I go to the I go to the Auto Transport Intel YouTube page and I find DOT compliance DOT compliance 101, which here I'm going to share the link to that show and what you want to do too is if you go into the video description of the show link that I just put in the live chat, if you go into the video description of that show link, you can click on the interview with Lionel, go straight to the interview, autohauler.com. Now there's a hyphen in that, that's why I wanted to get it just right. Uh, I'm going to share that in the live chat. So ask for Lionel at auto-hauler.com and there's your information Johnny I'm glad you uh, caught me right before I finished the show that's the information you need let me know how I can help I don't know if you're already signed up with CTS business coaching but do that too uh, and Ty will give you a first talk he yes there's a uh, there's a membership and there's a fee for his coaching but he likes to just talk to you get to know you and that's all that's on the house because this really isn't about, this is not a revenue generating uh, business model. That wasn't the idea. The idea was a lot of people come in looking for coaching and obviously time is money, but he does want to get to know you and see if he can, you know, help you. And then we'll go into the coaching part. And that's all Ty. I'm Jay. I'm the founder of Auto Transport Intel. Ty is the coach, my co-host on Cars on the Move. Sue is also my co-host on Dispatching Live on Thursdays. Guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much for what you do. Like I said, like I said, stay safe. I'll see you next week. And roll credits. Roll credits.